the 1950s, and it will now be known as... The Great Cotswold Jam-Off Final welcomes you all to Comfrey Magna Community Hall. That sounds an awful lot like the Great British Bake. Can you not talk over our sponsor, please? Ruff, ruff. I'm Sibylla Triest Perkins. I've been coming to this historic competition for years, but this is my first year attending as Managing Director of Jellops Jam. Unfortunately, we're just running a tad late, waiting on all the finalists to arrive. Oh, it's killing me, it's killing me. <sighs> all right, screen, screen, Avanti! Find me jam, Petra! Now that we are all gathered together, the Reverend and Mrs. Perfect, the priestly power Please couple. Make sure that Arthur Chance is the vicar of Comfrey Magna, the bishop's favourite. We don't get on. Really? Mm -hmm. You get on with everyone. There's something not quite right there, that's all. Do give what you can. There is a collection box at the back of the hall. There goes the competition, Maggie. Oh, please. Gilda Brenson's not the competition. <laughs> He's the competition. <laughs> oh, emergency, my yard. Follow that jump, mate! <laughs> I'm confident that the jam-off will be conducted in the same spirit of good-natured rivalry as it always has. In a minute, along with our celebrity judges, I'll be tasting all your wonderful jams. Ooh, nice touch with the judges. Stormzy, Greta Thunberg, Barack Obama. All send their apologies, so he asked for me and Charles instead. <laughs> Local celebrities. Big in Evesham. <laughs> Thank you for this honour. As judge, I promise to uphold the noble traditions of fairness and impartiality. And I promise to be the mean one. It's a no from me. You're fired. <laughs> I remember the first year I attended the jam -off. The writer returns. Have you finished your book? So, why are you back? Because, sir. Uh, because... Oh, thank you for answering all my texts, by the way. Uh, Am I? Yes, it was great to get those little updates. Um, not sure I sent any little updates to any of you. Yes, I know. I was being sarcastic. Why so elusive, James? Aitha, I need to have a little talk with you. Well, you can have a talk with me now, if you like. Do you want a pro jam? Susura did that. Pro jam? Yeah, I'll do the jokes, boy. Off you go. Chloe Selby, Who's that? Chloe was managing director of Jellop's Jams before Sibylla took over. I'd like you all to give exactly that to the next esteemed person I will... Of course. And before Chloe was MD, there was Liz Jellop, who Sarah found dead with her head in a vat of jam. <laughs> Which was terrible. Of course, that family are cursed. I'm a member of that cursed family. Chloe was my wife. Taken from us almost exactly a year ago today. I'm so sorry. Oh no. Aggie's in love. Oh, please don't, Agatha. I, I know he's lovely looking and all. Step but... away from the widower. Too much emotional baggage. When you get to a certain age, everyone's got a bit of emotional baggage. I think we're perfect for each other. Exactly. I'm sure Agatha's the right person to decide who's best for her romantically. I am. Yes. I know I am. You usually disapprove of my romantic liaisons. True. But sometimes you have to stop being judgmental. Allow people to move on with their lives. Hmm. You reply to that text pretty quickly, guys. What do you suppose the big talk he wants to have with you is about? Who cares about the big talk? Not I. <laughs> Looks like some people didn't get the good-natured rivalry man. Is that really sorry, necessary? Sorry. You see what I'm up against? They are taking it really seriously. 
Is this us making time for each other? Well, some would say that this, me and you at the jam off, counts as a date, no? Well, not when you're on jam protection duty, it doesn't. Bill, if we're going out together, at some point we should actually go out together. Fair enough. When are you free? Well, I'm really busy. I've got loads of missing pet cases to solve. Come on, let's get a date in the diary. Um. Oh. oh. Better go and uh, preserve the peace. <laughs> Harry. Um. Hi, Tony. What are you doing here? Are you a jam fan? No, uh, Agatha invited me. Invited you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll see you at work. Oh, this is interesting. What do we have here? Oh, well, it's a jam sweetened with honey. Mm. I love honey, but I'm allergic to bees. Go figure. <laughs> oh, you're allergic to bees? Well, you're going to be allergic to this and all. Horny goat weed and beetroot. I mean, pass the sick bucket. Maggie, need I remind you that intimidation of fellow competitors is a disqualifying offence. Oh, look at me! Oh, oh, no, sorry. Just a fly. My mistake. Said he'd see me at work? Yes, and so he will. He showed a talent for deduction in the Snoth case, and his enthusiasm counts for a lot. Therefore, I want to trial him as a junior detective. But I'm our junior detective. Well, now I have two junior detectives. Come on, little healthy competition doesn't do any harm. Well, great. So can he do the boring missing pet cases then? Listen, those missing pet cases are part of the agency's bread and butter. Very good training. It's important to serve one's apprenticeship. Gilda Brinson. Hmm. May I taste your words? You may. <laughs> I shall dive in. <laughs> oh, Nick. That's my GP, Dr. Stevens. She was telling me not to eat sugar. She says it rots your teeth and causes diabetes, and there she is shoveling it down her. Good grief. Very good. Hmm. You don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Miller, because bacon jam, right, is a jam! It's not a jam, it's a relish! What? Time out, ladies. Time out. Take Sorry. a breath. Sorry. How did you manage to calm them down? Are you some sort of lady whisperer? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's my job. I'm a therapist. <clears throat> Sometimes you just have to help people see the bigger picture. Mm. Believe me, that argument is about a lot more than jam. I'm so sorry about your wife. That must have been... Honey. I adore you. Let's make love for all eternity. Who is the meanest of the mean judges? Sir Charles. Say my name. Say my name.
Maybe Dr. Stevens was hallucinating like the other judges, and that's why she jumped. This is dreadful. Why are they all hallucinating? Maybe the jams were spiked. And Dr. Stevens had a double dose of whatever it was. Well, we saw a wolf and down the jams, didn't we, Agatha? Take a psychedelic drug to cause hallucinations like that. Like, like LSD. LSD. Not, Not that I've ever taken LSD. LSD. Agatha? People, I need to make a confession. This year, I went rogue with my ingredients. Oh, quick, someone. Uh, Google, can too much caster sugar make you think you can fly? Put your phones away. I don't think caster sugar is a psychedelic. I wouldn't arrest yourself just yet. Although, technically, as a jam maker, you are a suspect. Denzel Wilkes is an innocent man. I don't think whoever did this expected Dr. Stevens or any of the other judges to die. Feels like a prank gone wrong. We need to interview the jam makers. Yes, indeed we do. We need to interview all the jam makers. But interview them about a murder, not just a prank. Hey. Hey. You were right about the date. Life's too short not to make time for each other. Let's cancel whatever's in our diaries and do something special tomorrow night. You can be romantic. So, event runs from 9 to 10, with possible extension to 10.30, if we're really enjoying ourselves. Boo. I have an awful feeling that while I was under the influence of whatever that was, I may have called you honey. I apologise. Do you also want to apologise for wanting to make love to me for all eternity? Don't worry, James. I know he didn't mean it. Besides, I don't think I've got enough energy to make love to anyone for all eternity, let alone you. Thank God. So, what was this talk you wanted to have with me? Oh, yes, um... I... <sighs> bye bye, James. Bye. Mrs. Raisin, they've suspended me from duty. Cast me out because I'm a suspect in a Jamland murder inquiry, a hero brought down by his passions. Well, if it's sympathy you're after, I prefer to dispense it during office hours. This is an emergency. I want to hire you to clear the name of Denzel Wilkes. Specifically, the Denzel Wilkes, who's a Cotswold Detective Chief Inspector and award winning jam maker. Me. So Wilkes is a client? Yes. We don't think Wilkes is guilty of anything, do we, apart from being absolutely horrific at his job? No. But I'm happy for him to think he is and appears to investigate. <laughs> There's definitely something very suspicious about Dr. Stevens' death. There is absolutely no way she could have scaled that scaffolding unaided. Especially if she was as high on drugs or, or whatever as the, the other judges. I don't think you two are going to get out of this. I need all hands on deck. Now, first things first. Did Dr. Stevens have any enemies? Enemies, no. Legions of terrified patients, yes. Stubber Stevens gave me all my injections when I was four. I've still got the scars. Ooh. Stubber once gave me a prostate exam. I walked for a week. I've uh, changed my look now that I'm a private detective. Too much. Yes. Clients don't usually attend case conferences. Oh, you won't even know I'm here. Yeah. Jamie Dodger, anyone? Oh, I don't know what was in that jam, but I've still got the munchies. Yeah, me too. What is this? The teddy bear's picnic? Come on, 
can we just have a little focus on the case? Please, gentlemen, thank you very much. The fact that Dr. Stevens was a little heavy-handed does not constitute a murder motive. Could it be something to do with her agreeing to be a judge for the Jellops Jam-Off? Also, why was Dr. Stevens even a judge? She was always telling off her patients for eating sweet things. Yes, but she was in charge of the sugar-free jam category. Now, I know what you're all thinking. Sugar-free jam ain't jam. And yet again, Jellops make themselves unpopular by allowing it into the jam-off. Mm, Jellops have always been pretty unpopular. Really? Oh. From what I heard, Chloe Jellop had built the business into something of a rather cool little boutique company. Yes, but the new boss, Sibylla Trius Perkins, she's ruffled a few feathers locally. There was an article in the Eastern Times objecting to her putting the winning jam into production. Said it was glamorising unhealthy eating. I saw that. So, the winning jam could have made someone a lot of money. Not someone. Me. Whoa, it looks like Doc Stevens might have been suffering a serious case of divided loyalties. This article was written anonymously by a Carsley health professional. The only health professional in Carsley is the good doctor. The dead doctor. Mm. Where's Harry? He can't be here, he's, uh, he's on a run. Oh. I'm here, guys. Sorry, I just... I problem solved best when I'm moving. OK. So we have a possible motive for the possible murder of Dr. Stevens, in that it could be any one of the jam makers. Uh, pro tip. We call them jamsters. I'm not calling them that. Suspect number one, horny goat weed and beetroot, a.k.a. Gilda Brinson. No, it's definitely not Gilda. Gilda's a plastic jamster. Someone that fakes an interest in jam making just to look cool. Cool. Jam making's cool. Wow, who knew? What a world. Mm, your number one suspect is Bacon Jam, a.k.a. Mad Maggie Tubby. Yeah. Nothing would give her greater pleasure than the destruction of Denzel. And murdering Dr. Stevens would achieve that how? Hmm. If Maggie could pin the rap on me, it would. Does Maggie need the prize money? Well, she owns the family pig farm with her much calmer sister, soothing lavender conserve. Petra, to her many friends. OK. And then there is the handsome widower, the therapist, George something. George... George Selby, I think he said his name was. Yes. Anyway, he said that uh, Maggie and Sibylla had this ongoing feud, so it might be worth going to talk to Maggie. Roy and James? Maybe I'll tag along as an observer. All right, lose the pipe. Come on. Guys, gotcha. Anything odd about Reverend Charles being the only one of the judges not affected by tasting the jam? Oh, very good. Gold star. Top of the class. I can interview the chances. If Reverend and Mrs. Perfect had done something wrong, I'd love to be the first to know. Do I detect a note of jealousy there? We mustn't let our feelings and emotions get in the way of our work and job, Sarah. Really? No. You should go and talk to the chances. They live in a big house in the outskirts of Carsley. Well, I'll go and see the chances too. Oh, it's, it's Harry's lead. He should follow it up. Besides, the people of Carsley are depending on you to find their cats and dogs. Right, now, what do we, what do we know about Gilda? So, according to social media, she is a wellness coach specialising in the natural healing properties of organic jams. Oh, <laughs> a yoga instructor. Very good. Well, we need to get up close and personal to Gilda, so maybe, Sarah, you could try one of her yoga classes. OK. I can do yoga. OK, I can't do yoga. But I think we all know that I'm the one who has the best chance of getting Gilda to open up. Right. I'll go and talk to Gorgeous Selby. Gorgeous Selby. Gorgeous. George. Just George. Come on, then. Spill. What's this big chat you want to have with Aggie? Oh, I love workplace gossip. You can tell Denzel. No, I definitely can't. Well, I can't tell you either. Not until I told her. 
being discreet. Straight men are so boring. Mm. <laughs> Maggie Tubby's famous jam lab. I've always wanted a butcher's. Sweet little setup you got here, Max. Shame about your jams. <laughs> Eat it, or I'll ruin those good looks with acid. I don't believe that's acid. Isn't it? Want to ask you some questions? Yeah. What exactly are the ingredients in your jam? Oh, you think I'm telling you that in front of Weasel Wilk so he can steal my secret formula? Secret formula? The only thing you got a secret formula for is being as mad as a bag of snakes. Snakes. Hold a bit. Hey, 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 Johnny! Maggie Tubby and her mad scientist lab. Surely she's our poison. What did I tell you? Hang on a minute. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Selby. But, uh, I'd much rather you call me George. Oh, well, in that case, George. <laughs> Let me pour you a large glass of wine. <laughs> right. What's wrong? Sorry, sorry, but um, I just, I can't do this. What? That awful business yesterday and the anniversary of Chloe's. Mm. I'm just, um, I'm very raw, <gasps> easily triggered at the moment. It's... I know this isn't the case, but I have to admit, when you suggested we meet, this is very unprofessional of me, but somehow it felt like a date. Oh, oh. What a ghastly thought. No, 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 no not ghastly at all. The opposite, in fact. It's just... It's just... What's that? It's just... What? Sorry, yeah, I'm a mess. Hmm. Oh, no. Sorry, it's me. I'm a mess. Maggie wants to apologise to you, girl. That's better. Not you. No. Okay. Of course not. Wilkes has always been in love with me. I imagine Wilkes been in love with anyone. Years ago, he used to run with the same crowd of young jam makers. See, we were wild, but we were happy. Sorry, I threatened to throw acid over you guys. Wait up. Uh, What's going on with you, Maggie? Bullying Gilda Brenson, threatening Sibylla, not to mention us. Look, somebody put something nasty in that jam. And this laboratory looked to me like the perfect place to have cooked it up. Well, it is. I could have poisoned a lot of them if I felt like it. Oh, but you didn't feel like it, did you? No. And you never would. No. No, Maggie's really stressed. She wasn't always a pig farmer. No. Until Sibylla fired me, I was a very happy food scientist at Jellops. And it's the lab. Yes. And Gilda Brenson asked me to give a jam master class at one of her wellness days, and I... had a really bad experience. Shh. How are your finances after losing your job? I mean, that prize money would have come in handy. Well, I'm fine for money, thanks to the farm. And I wouldn't have wanted my jam to go into production. I supported the campaign against that happening. When Sibylla took over as MD after Chloe died, the company was never the same. Chloe was 100% jealous. If you'd cut her, she would bleed jam. Sibylla's not a jamster. She's a businesswoman. Chloe would never have tried to make big profits out of an amateur competition. Or rebrand it as something as tacky as the jam <laughs> Which fool may pay to come up with that? But if I ever met them, I'd throw real acid in their face. What an idiot. But Sibylla is the one that's stirring up all this bad feeling. It's her you people should be investigating. I have to admit, I'm more than a little distracted by you. I find you extremely attractive. In a sort of no strings, little bit of fun kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we rewind and start again? Yeah. Strictly professional. I would like to ask you some questions, Mr. Selby. Of course, Ms. Raisin. There's one suspect who is on everyone's lips at the moment, and that is 
Maggie Tubby. Well, I'm not entirely convinced because you told me that her argument was not about jam. What was it about? Is she a client of yours? She was, so I can't answer that. Oh. Sorry. But I will say this. Maggie has anger issues around jam, but is she capable of murder? No. I'll tell you who I think you should be investigating. Who was always at war with Dr. Stevens, who at one point threatened her in the vilest language. Who? Who? Gilda Brenson. <gasps> Gilda Brenson. Mm, their feud was nothing to do with jam. Gilda. Yeah, Gilda fancies herself as a wellness guru. The Gwyneth Paltrow of the Cotswolds, she thinks. Oh, quite the claim. Yeah. Dr. Stevens hated the way Gilda persuaded patients of hers to reject medication and try her new age nonsense mm. instead. And as a therapist, I feel the same. Mm. She is dangerous, not to be trusted. Trust me. Cheers. Oh, I do trust you. Good. Oh, Harry. Hi. I happen to be in the area, and I, I thought I'd pop in and ask Reverend and Mrs. Chance a few questions. That's funny. I was just about to ask them some questions myself. Oh, well, of course. We're so in awe of Sarah, managing to run a parish and help out a famous detective like Agatha Raisin. Well, Arthur and I find looking after our own little flock a full-time job. I look after my little flock. But maybe not as full-time as you look after your little flock. So, Reverend, uh, do you mind if I ask which one of the jams you tasted? Um, none of them. Oh. Um, actually, I'm uh, more an honorary judge, to be honest. I mean, apart from the asthma, I have severe allergies and I can't run the risk of a reaction. Mm. Oh. Which is very hard for Arthur because he's a jam fanatic. <laughs> it's one of the major reasons that I chose this parish, but luckily, Maggie Tubby does make me some rather delicious anti-allergic jam treats, so... So I can't complain. Oh, dear Sibira. She visits her cousin, Chloe's grave, every day. So loyal. Mm. And so brave. Mm. Especially after all the gossip. <laughs> um, awful. What kind of gossip is that, Patricia? Thanks to lovely, helpful Mrs. Chance, telling us about a thread on carsleycapers.com. According to about... 27 posts by someone calling themselves at Cotswold Jam Fiend. Uh... What? What? Sybil is shagging George Selby. See? We told you not to go there. And I haven't. I think it's highly unlikely that George is shagging anyone. I happen to know he's very raw at the moment. Not in a place to have a shag. I mean, a relationship. Anyway! I fail to see how this fanciful relationship between George and Sibylla has any pertinence to the murder of Dr. Stevens. Who knows? Maggie and Petra Tubby did say we should speak to Sibylla. Trying to put us off the scent. Typical Tubby trick. Dr. Stevens did write that disparaging article about Sibylla and Jellops. So... I should probably go and talk to Sibylla. Good on Right. See, so you found one. Wilkes and Raisin, the dream team, together at last. Raisin and Wilkes. Mrs. Treased Perkins, I'm. I know who you are, Mrs. Raisin. Georgie told me all about you. Oh, what did Georgie say? Darling, who's at the door? Agatha. Hi. How's, um, just leaving? And knee behind ankle. Good. And then we're going to go up into warrior pose. Yep. And round into side angle. Oh, hello. <laughs> Come for more of your tasty jam. That batch is all gone. No, no, I'm joking. I'm, I'm here for the yoga. Oh, great. Uh, well, I'll get you some kit you can move and stretch in. Ah, I'm sure I can move and stretch in these. Uh. 
Didn't exactly look like he was just leaving. Oh, he's always popping in and out. Practically lives here. Can we get on? I know what you're going to ask me. You're going to ask me if I have anything against Dr. Stevens because of the article she wrote. She's good. That article didn't bother me at all. I've had a very successful career in business. I'm more Marmite than jam. I'll live with it. Well, someone's spreading salacious gossip about you online. I just wondered if it might be the same person who spiked the jam that you, Dr. Stevens, and the others tasted with seemingly psychedelic drugs. Maggie Tubby. She's caught swallowed jam fiend, no doubt about it. Well, I never knew Dr. Stevens, so I don't know what Maggie would have against her. But Maggie hates me, and she's obsessed with George. Got a pathetic crush on him like every sad old spinster around here. <laughs> sad old spinster. Little harsh. Not every old spinster is sad. Some mature ladies of a certain age may find they have a genuine emotional connection to him. I'd imagine. Why did you fire Maggie from Jellops? Well, she's a maverick. Our customers are a traditional lot. You have to go slowly. Maggie refused to do that, always pushing crazy new flavours. I mean, bacon jam. Seriously. Maybe I could work for Jellops. Are you still hiring? Shall I tell you a secret? Oh, yeah. I hate jam. Won't have it in the house. You hate jam? Mm-hmm. She's a monster. I had a job I loved. But after Chloe died, I felt I owed it to her to carry on her legacy. Now, all this abuse is my reward. I've got things to do. Any more questions about Dr. Stevens? Yes. Are you having an affair with George Selby? That's not a question about Dr. Stevens. He's got a point. Are you? No. Yes. Good. Excellent. Brilliant. This is music to my ears. I hate gossip, don't you? Come on. And Lord of the Dance. Hi. Uh, well, just relax, ladies. Hi, yes, thank you. Over there, please. Thank you. And when he's ready. Okay. And Lord of the Dance. Uh, yeah, ladies, just go into your vinyasa. Let's start with some one-on-one -on -one tuition. Starting with Adho Mukha Svanasana. Sorry? The downward dog. Down you go, doggy. Oh, I see. It's just like a dog, eh? Oh! Oh! Ah. So, uh, this yoga business, is it profitable? Or would a cash injection from winning the jam off have been very welcome? Oh! Vera Badrasana 2. Oh. Ah. Warrior pose. Oh. Can I be absolutely honest with you? I hate yoga. I just wanted to see you again. Oh, that's nice. Because I thought you were a private detective trying to ask me some sneaky questions. Oh, a lot of tension in that pelvis. Oh. We need to work at releasing that. Oh, that sounds good. How did you get on with Dr. Stevens? Sleeping pigeon. Oh, don't feel very sleepy. Ever followed the Inca Trail? Oh, no, no, but I've uh, taken a stroll down the Cotswold Way. In the words of Emperor Pachacutec, he who envies the good draws evil from them for himself, like the spider draws Ooh. poison from flowers. Ah. Ah. Oh, very good. Very wise emperor. Can I stop doing yoga now, please? <laughs> oh. Dr. Stevens was a jealous spirit, close to the magical possibilities of the universe. I have no idea who was responsible for her death, but she brought it on herself through her own cosmic actions. Oh. You need opening up emotionally. You should come on a wellness day. I'm enjoying Wilkes not being around. Even if it means a load more work for me and not being around for you. Oh, well, don't worry. I'm used to being second best at the moment. Bill, this is a date. Can we... No more shop talk. 
Yes, you're absolutely right. Let's forget about work and spend the whole evening focusing on each other. Uh... Bill, just answer it. I'm so sorry. Hello? Yeah? When? Okay. Now. So, lab reports confirm Dr. Stevens had a psychedelic in her system. They need me back at the station. Oh. Well, you should probably go then. What about our date? I'll get my people to call your people. I don't believe in hiding feelings. Uh, I know we have chemistry, but right now, any kind of sexual involvement would be emotionally very dangerous for me. Absolutely. I get it. It would probably be very dangerous for me, too. Champagne will be just the job, thanks. Broken boiler at Barfield. So, I decided to come over for a post yoga soak. Ah, stiff as a board. I'm going to go. jam tarts for the case conference. I thought they might provide a bit of inspiration. Ooh, brain food. Gold star for you, Tony. Mm -hmm. I love a jam tart. Which reminds me, Agatha, I'm sorry for ruining your evening with gorgeous George. Did you find much out? Well, I didn't really have a great deal of time to, did I? Anyway, I think everyone was far more interested in whether you managed to open up gorgeous Gilda. I'm not sure I am. <clears throat> in my opinion, if Charles did ruin your evening with George, then the only way forward is to shed in another one. Are you still high? You're perplexing me. Please, go back to being the judgy James that we all know and... Tell me, did you find out anything from Gorgeous Gilda? I didn't find much out. She swore she had nothing to do with Stephen's death and then wanged on about cosmic Incas. She knows no one takes her seriously, but she stands by her jam. She also said I should go on something called... A wellness day. Wait, Maggie Tubby said she went on Gilda's wellness day and had a really bad experience. Apparently that's why she hates her. Sibylla is 100% convinced that the poisoner is Maggie, although Gilda is also a suspect. We need to talk to both of them. Could you two go and talk to Maggie? Yeah. Slow down, same bolt. We're driving. Agatha, I can't help thinking that this thing with George is slightly clouding your judgment. Mm. You're a fine one to talk. What about this thing with Gilda clouding yours? Yes, but I'm Charles Freyth, feckless playboy and amateur detective. You're the professional with the golden haunches, hunches that we depend on. Yes, I am. And I also have a golden hunch that you should talk to Gilda. Book yourself into one of her wellness days. There's definitely something dubious going on there. Well, hang on. I mean, shouldn't we find out exactly how bad a really bad experience is first. Well, I don't imagine it's life-threatening. <laughs> you can go with him, James. Moral support. Keep an eye on him. Hi. 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 Oh, thank you. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a year ago. I was driving us home from the Fruit Preserve Festival. <laughs> We'd all 
me, Chloe, and Sibylla, we, we'd had such a great day. And, and suddenly there was a car on the wrong side of the road coming right at us, and uh, I swerved to avoid him. And, uh, Chloe died instantly, so did the driver of the other cars. It's an accident. Sorry, I still find it hard to talk about. Sibylla, are you right, my dear? Chloe, she was it's such not, a special. It's not that. Tell me, whatever your burden, you don't have to carry it alone. What? I'm not Cotswold Jam Fiend! I don't have to hide behind some stupid profile name to ditch my dirt. Mm. I've noticed. Although, whoever it is, they are onto something. Sibylla always wanted to get a clause into George. Look, we're not interested in gossip. We're trying to establish who killed Dr. Stevens and who spiked those jams. Sibylla was a victim. She's one of the few people we pretty much know who didn't do it. Oh, really? She could have spiked those jams, pretended to taste them, and then faked that whole Hello Kitty act she came up with. I doubt it. Look, I don't necessarily doubt it. it. It's a possibility, yes. But until we get some hard evidence that links Sibylla to Dr. Stevens' death, she's not a person of interest in this investigation. Sorry, I have a client. I forgot. Well, duty calls. <laughs> Off you go. Not a problem. Thanks for being so understanding. Oh, I'm not usually. <laughs> I don't quite know what's going into me. <laughs> See you soon. find the right moment to tell her. I mean, every time I get her on her own, somebody else will come in or... I know, it's really hard. But you're going to have to tell Agatha before she hears it from somebody else. What if the somebody else she heard it from was you? Yeah, I'll tell her. Agatha's bark is worse than her bite. Sergeant. Yes. Lovely creeper. Yeah. How's your investigation going? Fine, thank you. Yeah. How's your investigation oh, going? Perfect, yeah. No more boring red tape or police regulations. I'm going rogue again. Oh, Alberston Healthcare, big pharmaceutical company. Yes, I'm aware of that. Oh, yes, I'm aware of that. But were you aware that Sabilla Trieste Perkins was their CEO before she went to Jellops? Yeah. Were you aware of that? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that? That's some free intel from my investigation to yours. Yeah. Oh, no, I should have kept that intel for my investigation. Oh, that's annoying. Hello? Agatha, Cotswold Jam Fiend just posted a video on Carsley Capers. That is definitely Dr. Stevens. Talking to Sibylla, who told me that she didn't even know her. Right, that's it. I'm going to go to her house now. Come on. Come on, Sabrina. Come on. 
Come on. Yeah, I need an ambulance. Come on, Sibella, come on. Come on. Please. She's... Guys, 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 guys. This is Mrs. Agatha Raisin, esteemed private investigator and collaborator with Detective Sergeant Wong. I'm sure he'd want you to let her through. Thank you, Inspector. Well, credit where credit's due. Yeah, I was just testing your lads. Mm -hmm. And you passed. Mm -hmm. Good police work. Mm. I'm sorry, I know you must still be in shock, but I have to ask you a few questions about how Sibylla died. It's a terrible accident. It's just... She's just lying there in the garden, bees buzzing all round her. She's... Well, she's always been allergic to them. I found an EpiPen, but... How did you get into the house? I have my own keys. And what made you come here this afternoon? I got a text from Sibylla. I was worried, so I came here. Agatha, I... I think having another death linked to Jellop's jams has been hard for her. You sure it was just the association to Jellop's? Because a video has just been posted online of Sibylla and the doctor fighting just a few days before the jam off. I didn't know about that. Any idea what they could have been arguing about? Dr. Stevens anonymously wrote that newspaper article that was critical of Jellop's while still agreeing to be a judge at the jam off. Well, well, you, you think Sibylla killed Dr. Stevens and over a newspaper article? Sibylla is... was a high-powered businesswoman. She wouldn't have given that article a second thought. Okay. Well, we're going to take you back to the station to make a statement. Agatha. George. We need to stop this. You need to grieve and I... I have a case to crack. 